What's going on guys? So we'll let everyone else do the trash talking and we'll get to work. Let's modify that guitar body. First things first here, we're gonna slice off the back. I've got my Laguna 16 HD here. I've had this thing for about 10 years. Incredibly accurate. This is a extra tall fence that I put on here so I can do this slicing off. This really helps when you wanna get matching control covers as the back so I've done that before so just slice off this back piece put it to the side and then we'll slice off the front my only complaint about this saw is that the dust collection isn't great here obviously I'm cutting off at the neck pocket and so the dust is just falling down but even throughout the use of this thing the dust port is on the bottom right there and it just doesn't work all that well sometimes I modified it at one point but wasn't doing it so this is a nice ash body and now we've got the front off I'm gonna take this over to the sander and sand it flat so I get ready to glue it so I've had this drum sander for probably about 10 years as well. Those two tools are really the core of my shop, being able to resaw and then being able to sand flat. I don't really use a planer much. I use this drum sander all the time. So we'll get it flat on both sides. We'll then screw in my hollow body template. We're gonna do this as a hollow body. We're going to do an interesting configuration where we don't have a control panel. We're going to fish this stuff through. So this is my hollow body template with some supports in the center. And then we'll knock those out and uh, reroute after we glue on that first bottom plate. So I've got a countersink bit. And then we're just going to screw these in with wood screws. And then I've got my huge router with a bowl carving bit and then I've got an extra wide template on this DeWalt 621 router and I can really hog out a ton of material with this so this is just showing you guys some heavy modifications on a guitar body I could have ordered the kit differently I just figured I'd show you the plethora of stuff that I can do on a body we're all gonna do something a little bit different but this is sort of my unique hollow body design that I've, I've used before so all in it probably takes about 20 to 25 minutes to route all this out I can't take that whole pass in one sort of route I do a little bit on each side and then I can keep the chips in control on my table. Even though this has got a vacuum port, you can see a lot of times I'm taking that vacuum port outside the edge of the body and it makes a huge mess. So we've got most of this routed down. Clean up that top edge. And then what we're gonna do is bust through with a drill bit and then flip over and use a bottom bearing bit and clean up uh, the holes here. So this is a I don't know, half inch, probably an inch bit and we're just gonna pop through. And then that's the bottom bearing bit. We'll clamp this down and route out so we've got the hollow body and here I am making a mess my dust collection on this Porter cable router is not great and so instead of using the DeWalt that has the good dust collection this one doesn't have any and I make a huge mess here so wasn't fully thinking about that as I <laughs> did that first route with the second one I hook up the vacuum to try and pick up some chips but it still makes a huge mess. That's right, we'll vacuum it up here in a second. 
but now I've got a core that's hollowed out. We we'll use some regular tight bond to pull the plates together. Again, these tops are from Kimball Hardwoods. He has the best selection of wood. These roasted birch tops are very unique and take a stain really well. That's top one. This is the bottom. We'll let the plate sit for usually a day or so. And then we'll take them upstairs to the drum sander and sand them down. I run these through a couple times here. I'm just showing you one slow pass. This is real time speed. So then we're going to put the bottom on first. Sort of draw where it goes. We're going to use hide glue. Transform this thing to a tonal beast. And I'm still using those center supports so I can get a nice glue joint and then we'll take those out later I'll show you I use all my old credit cards as glue spreaders and what I really want to do is make sure I've got those center joints perfect I think when I look at guitars that's the one thing that I notice in terms of quality of build is how tight are those seams it doesn't really matter but it's just one of my things. So here is where you want as many clamps as you can get. And instead of throwing this on my wine press clamp, I just pull out all the clamps I've got. I add a board to the center there so I get nice consistent pressure. And then on the sides, if you run a clamp every couple inches, you can even out that pressure. I'm still going to sand this once more. So a lot of the clamps have rubber feet on the bottom. Let's see, I've got an old vise that I use every once in a while. And here I pull out pretty much every clamp I have in the shop to get this done. Those old school clamps probably are older than me. Made in the USA. And then some of the clamps I have, I permanently affixed felt pads so that I don't ever sort of dent the woods. I love those two-sided clamps from Grizzly. I bought those years ago. I wish I had more of them now. Let it dry for a couple days. High glue takes a little bit longer to dry. And then we'll take this upstairs to my Craftsman table router with a top bearing bit mounted upside down and we'll just clean this up. That's a bottom bearing bit mounted up in the router. Once that's all set, we're gonna cut those supports off. So now we'll have a full hollow body. The bottom cuts here are always a little bit of a pain so I get a chisel. Using Narix chisels, these really are outstanding. So we'll cut these down, pop off the pieces of wood. Just a slow back and forth digging this out. I don't want to break the body. But chiseling this out gives me a nice clean spot where I can then use the router and clean off those edges. There we pop that off. Still gotta route that piece out. And here we're also gonna just probably take like less than a sixteenth off the back of the body as well. Just make sure it's nice and flat. And then the glue that accumulated on the side, sort of get rid of it. And I got one little piece I got to clean up. And there you see, I'll just sort of brush the router on the rest of the body and get it clean. Nice and smooth.
One Piece is driving me nuts. Want it clean. So then we're going to route the access for the tone and volume control. And I'm going to fish that through where the humbucker is going to go. That's the control wire for the switch and for the top humbucker. And so I'm totally sort of reconfiguring this guitar. Ben is going to send me some humbuckers to use. Try those out. And then we're going to run some hide glue on the top. I had previously cut out the plate to sort of fit it. Sometimes I prefer using my finger to using the spreader because then I can gauge exactly how thick it is. And here I'm lining up that seam so it's perfect. And we'll just start adding more clamps. Again, a piece of wood to sort of brace the center. And these long reach clamps are really helpful. So as you're starting out, don't forget the long reach clamps, you'll need them. And it's weird, the Harbor Freight little clamps that I'm using there, I bought extra ones, but they're not as good as the first run that I bought many years ago. The last batch I bought just aren't the same. So after letting that sit for a couple more days, we'll go ahead and clean up the edge. A little bit concerned about where that output jack is. Don't want it to sort of bite into it. And then we're gonna sand the top once more. Get it nice and flat now that it's on the body. This top is so pretty. I'm gonna move this over to my Stanley pin router that is older than me and my dad probably. And it's got a bottom bearing bit and we're gonna route out that neck pocket exactly where it needs to be. And roasted woods can be a little bit brittle and I didn't want this to sort of rip off a whole piece. And so I'm just drilling and getting a little bit extra uh, space so I can see what's going on so we'll just bust this out and we'll clean that up I'm a little bit concerned you can see at the heel of the pocket I've got a hole from where they drilled before so I go really slow and then I, I just file that later we do some sanding on the Rikon to get this flat or the rigid I have two of these, you can get these at Home Depot. This is the Luthier's tool for sure. So we start with, I think 180 grit, and then this is 220. Get the, the sides nice and flat. And then we'll do the spindle sander on the side there as well. Come back upstairs, then once it's flat, and put a small lip on this, a 1 8 lip. I'm not going to do natural binding. I don't like uh, sort of the, the color tone of the birch for the natural binding. So we're just going to stain the sides. Be careful of the control plate, control jack hole there. Time to do some sanding here. And I've got my squirrel cage fan blowing that dust out. And I've got my... Craftsman 5 inch sander. Got some grief from someone saying I should have a better sander outside here, and I, I think you're probably right. This one I've had for I think three or four years, and it's not as good as the Makita one I have in the basement, so I think I may get another Makita here. So we start with 120, move up to 320. I've got a nice little drawer set below that I, I keep everything slightly or, slightly organized. Getting closer, now it's time to lay this out. So I've got a 25 and a half board that I use consistently. 
for the whiskey barrel guitars and everything else. And I want to make sure that the template sits right. And we're going to redo some humbuckers. That template is my daughter's drawing, I think. I let her mark it up. It was a spalted top that wasn't that nice, but it was actually a nice piece of hardwood. So we used, uh, used it. I'm not going to do an F hole on this. I think it, I want to keep as much vigor in the wood as I can. So we'll clamp this down, make sure it lines up against that center line. And then we've got, again, a DeWalt 621 router, got a top bearing bit, I think it's a inch bit, and we'll just clean this up. It's funny, once you sort of pop through, the routing then goes real quick. And since I hogged so much of this out, it takes a couple seconds. Looking good. Lots of chips floating around that body. And for this, I've got to use a plate. Icon plates gave me a whole bunch of plates when I first started working with them. And this has got a flame to it. And I figure, hey, this sort of matches the wood a little bit. Let's use this one, then a standard plate. So Icon plates has all these really awesome different types of plates available on the website. So we started that hole with just a sixteenth going down a little bit and then we moved up one size and then we move up one more size again to get to three sixteenths. Wanted to make sure that these went in nice and even and level and that's the three sixteenth bit. Lastly here we're going to fit this back on and then redrill some neck holes. So we come back with a 3 16th bit and just reverse it just to get where it's going to go. And then we'll come back with uh, a little bit bigger than an eighth and redrill those so we've got some even holes. Going to drill for the straps and then I'm going to drill the bridge now that we're all set. Thing is looking awesome at this point significantly light way unique design no control panel we'll fish all this through now we're going to start testing some stains i am really liking this black and yellow i think it's got a real interesting vibe i tested some yellow and browns and i don't think that's going to work so next video we'll be doing some staining thanks for watching guys we'll see you in the next video